Hi, my name is James, and I want to walk you through the instructions on how to play my new board game, Feudal Lords. This is a game that's based on the premise that uh, you're in basically medieval England, and you're a sharecropper, and so you're working for your feudal lord. The object of the game is to produce commodities, sell them, play the market correctly, and then um, make your feudal lord the most money. Whoever has the happiest feudal lord at the end of the game is the one who wins the game. At the beginning of the game, each player gets 12 of these cards. They look like this. And there's different things on here that relate to the four phases of the game. And these cards are played from the player's hand and eliminated one at a time. And those determine what happens as far as what commodities they buy, if, there's, if they have a bumper crop, if they lose some production, what their yield is like at the end of the growing season, and then what the, eventually what the feudal lord take is at the end of each round, which is called a production year. So the way you know what's played on a card is through this wheel that's in the middle. And throughout the whole game, this token here moves in this direction. And wherever it lands, like let's say right here it lands on a two, then you'll know you'll be playing in row number two and whatever column that you're currently playing in. You might be investing in a new commodity, you might be managing your commodity. So for this, this example, if you were managing your commodity and it's row two, you would put plus one all. So your production would increase on all of your commodities. So that's what these cards are for. And this, like I said, just continues to go throughout the game. This is a round marker. Tells you what round of the production year that you're in. So the way we determine how this is moved are just these move cards. They say four, so we know we're going to go one, two, three, four spaces around, and that puts us back on a two. And there's also a production here. This tells us what happens at the end of each turn. Um, sometimes it's good. Uh, sometimes, as in real life, with your building or producing things, it's not so good. And so that's also a, an indicator of what happens at the very end of each turn. So here you can see each player has an individual game board. This at the bottom tracks the sharecropper's personal coins or how much money he has. You just use these little tokens to kind of keep track here. This right here is an indicator of what column you're going to play on these cards and you indicate that at the beginning of each turn. So if it's at the beginning of the game obviously I want to build a commodity so I'm going to be playing in column one. This is your production chart so as you build and produce things you kind of inch your way up this chart and it keeps track. There's wood, corn, iron, and gold. Obviously the wood, there's a cost here. The wood costs the least amount to begin producing corn, iron, gold, all the way up to the highest. And it takes longer, as you can see, to produce gold or iron because when you sell back to the market later on, those are worth more. Here's the market calculator. This is the center of the board. That's what we use at the end of all production. And that's how we keep track of how much basically how much you made in the market. And then um, we go over here to the feudal lord take. That's a chart that at the very end, after you've made your money in the market, depending again, we would be on column four, what the take is for the feudal lord that determines how much money you get to keep and how much money your feudal lord gets to keep. The, one of the key strategy points in this, obviously, is you want to make your feudal lord happy by giving him the most money, but the more money you give the feudal lord, then that's less money that you have for the next production year to invest in you know, commodities to, again, make more money. So you have to kind of walk that balance between how much do I keep, how much do I give the feudal lord. So this section right here is the sharecropper loan. At the beginning of each game, the feudal lord gives each player 100 coins. That's what's down here to invest and to produce and make money in the market so that they can return money back to the feudal lord. Now at the beginning of each production year, if a player feels like they're low on funds, they can go ahead and take more loan, but it does come at a, at a high interest rate. And at the very end of the game, there's a bonus if you're able to pay back from your sharecropper coins your origin or your loan amount, whatever that may be. So it might be 100 and 50 coins. If you can pay that back at the end of the game, then you get bonus uh, points up here to your feudal lord score, which again, this is the one that determines who wins the game. We want a, a happy feudal lord. 
Then up at the very top here is another key thing to keep track of. This is the market. And so as with any market, we can either have a sparse market, we can just have an average market, or we can have a flooded market. And that determines how much things sell back for. So for example, if you're if it's a three player game and um, you're, you've built up some iron, you look at the total units of iron. So this player would have three, let's say nobody else does. So if it's a three player game, we can look and see that that's less than eight units. Three is less than eight. So we know that iron, then each of those units would sell back for 45 uh, coins or dollars each. So that's how much he would make. And then that would be recorded in this market calculator. If the total number of iron was between eight and 12, it's an average sellback, which is 30. And if it's above 12, we have a flooded market and it only sells for 15. So while you're building your own commodities, you also have to keep track of what's happening on the board because you can actually at some points make money by making sure that the market is not flooded. So by producing less, you can actually make more money. And that's something that you have to keep track of the whole board while the round is going on. So the order of play is like this. At the beginning, you would declare, of course, column one, you have to build commodities. You would draw a move card. It would tell you to move four. So since we start here, one, two, three, four, that highlights a four. So we would know on our player hand that if we're, we're gonna have to pick from row four in the invest column in any one of the cards that's in our hand. Now you're gonna have to keep an eye on things plus two any is a good production as we manage um, our investments. So you wanna, if you wanna play, if you wanted to play wood and invest in that, you might wanna look and see if you have wood somewhere else so that you could hang on to this particular card, but you may, and you may or may not. So this is where kind of a scan of your cards is gonna be important in the game to see what you do. So we would invest column one, all the players, would invest, they would start their kind of tracker tokens at the bottom of the market. This says plus one at the prediction, uh, production after all the players have played, everyone moves up. Any plus one production means anything you had. So if you have multiple items uh, being produced, then everything would move up according to that card. And then that's the end of the round. Now we move up here to round two. Get players declare which column they're gonna play in. And of course this costs money to um, invest in commodities. So according to this chart, wood costs 20. So the player, their own coins as they invest in wood would go down to 80. The next round, say they invested in gold. Well, that costs 70. So they would be down to 10. They have 10 of their own coins. Um, and so play continues in that manner. Obviously when you're out of money, you can't invest anymore. So you move to column two. And you can move between column two and column one freely as long as you have money. You can manage kind of however you want. But then when we're in the manage in column two, like I said, we you're trying to produce. So let's say we move up here and it lands on a two. And I want, oh, I've got to get, I've got a plus one in my manage column on, on row two. So I'm going to play that card, which means I discard it and I increase this. And so that's how you build up. There are uh, plus twos. There are things called bumper crop for wood or corn, which means plus three. There's strike at rich for iron or gold, which is also plus three. So there's ways that you can, um, those are the ways that through these rounds, 12 rounds per production year, that you build up your commodities. So as we move through this, these rounds would go and go and go. So like, let's say we're at round six. One thing that is in play after we get to round five is if this top coin, the move coin, the, or the move token, comes back around according to these cards and catches up and lines up here with these. Past round five, we have what's called an early winter. And so an early winter shuts everything down. There's no more production. And wherever you are is where you are. And so if you've spent a lot of money up front and early winter happens early and you haven't, don't have very much production, it could hurt you. It could be a catch up mechanism. It could help you if you were able to produce quickly and other players weren't. Um, but that's just a, an event that you have to watch for in the game that causes a bit of, well, it can catch people up, and cause a bit of chaos, something that um, all of the players may or may not be rooting for on any given move. 
So we basically play this all the way around, all the way to round 10. And so players are selecting cards and getting, and getting rid of them. So they're going to have fewer and fewer cards left eventually until they'll have two cards left. If we don't have an early winter, there'll be two cards left for round 11 and round 12. And round 12, or sorry, round 11, everybody plays in column 3 on their card, which is their yield. So there's kind of one last production. How well did their commodities yield? And there's high, lower, average. And so you pick those. Um, high obviously means you get some more production. Low means you go back and average you, you just stay. So once that's done, you've selected that. That's the end of round 11. Now we go to market. So I've kind of explained that before. But for example, this player would have 12 wood and 2 gold to go to market. So depending on what the rest of the, the players have in the rest of the game, we would see how much we sell back for. So let's imagine that this player earned 300 and 30 coins. So let's assume that everybody is sold back to the market. That's all done. And we go to round 12. This is our final round. We turn over the move card. It says to go four, one, two, three, four. So we're playing in row number two in column four. Column four is row 12 or round 12. So this player is going to know from one, two, that he gets a kind take. So the feudal lord is going to be kind to him. So we look up here to our market calculator and we earn 330 coins and we have a kind take. So we go to our chart. That's over here. So a kind take means the feudal lord gets 210 coins and the player gets an additional 140 coins added onto the 10. So they would have 150 coins for the next round. So depending upon your take, um, you could have more or less. Let's pretend this player had a greedy take from that same chart. Uh, if it was a greedy take, then his feudal lord would get 280, which would be good, but he would have only got 70 additional sharecropper coins. So his total would be 80, which kind of makes it a little difficult to reinvest the next round. So that's where it gets a little tricky, and you may have to take some additional loans up here. There's a little chart here. If you do really well, and you are, uh, if you land in these columns over here, then it's actually an upper tier and it's a bit of a catch-up mechanism, but the commodities cost you more to invest. Since you made more, commodities cost you more to reinvest those. So that's basically how the, go the game goes. Like I said, you do four production years. At the end of those four production years, the feudal lord who has the most money up here is the winner. Remembering that if you can pay back from your personal coins at the end of the fourth production year, whatever loan amount you have, then that amount gets added on to your feudal lord profit. So it's definitely a bonus to be able to do that. And um, that's the basics of feudal lord. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy it.